Hey, this is Marcos with Future Studio University. In this video, we will look at how to handle cookies and happy, especially how to create, read, update, and delete them. Cookie handling and happy means sharing state across requests. And especially sharing state across requests means that you are sending a cookie to the client, most likely in the browser, and for each subsequent request, the client will send this cookie back to you so you can grab the information later and in the requests that are following after you set them. Let's jump right into the code and explore the cookie handling in Happy. So we will use the Future Flick Starter Kit to implement our custom cookie handling. And I want to tell you that I've already updated the Future Flick Starter Kit to version 17 of Happy. And you will see a lot of async await throughout this tutorial, but it's totally fine. You can adapt it to happy in version 16 or lower, and it's the same way, but we, you will see the code in version 17, but it's just, it works the same as in 16. I've already prepared a cookies plugin, and the entry point for that is the index.js file. But before editing anything here, we, I want to tell you that the server.js file, which is the entry point to the FutureFlix starter kit, registers this cookie plugin located in server cookies. And when starting the FutureFlix starter kit server, it will pick up the plugin and register the functionality. Now let's go to the cookies plugin and the index.js file. And there you can see the first to do. Cookie handling in Happy is a two-step process. The first step is to tell the Happy server that you're initializing a specific state in your server and that you want to handle this state as a cookie. And you can see that I added the comment and let's copy it over here. So the method is server.state and then you need to provide the cookie name. Let's use data as our cookie name. And then you need to provide a bunch of options. So the first one is a time to live. It's called TTL and you need to set the value in milliseconds. So let's say we want 10 seconds. It will look like this. The second one is how to encode the cookie. And let's go for base 64 JSON. And ultimately we want the cookie to be secure in production. And therefore we will use an environment variable called node env and check if it's equal to production. All right, that's a basic setup for the cookie handling in Happy. This tells our Happy server to handle the data cookie, which lives for 10 seconds on our server to base 46 JSON encoded and to have it secure during production. All right. Ultimately, we will register a list of routes. Let's go over here. We're importing the handler file, which is this one. And there you can see, we're going to create, read, update, and delete the cookies. And over here, the first one is the initial route slash cookies, which points to the read handler as well. All right, let's go over here. And there you can see I've prepared the basic skeleton for the cookie handler. But now before changing anything here, let's start the future Flix server and see how the views look like. So I'm switching to iterm and I've prepared the start command. Let's start it. All right, switch to Chrome and let's go over to localhost on port 3000. Okay, the cookies. We can go over here. All right, no cookie data available. So clicking any of the buttons over here, you can see a title and you can see the URL updating, but nothing happens. We just see the title of no cookie data available, created, updated, and deleted. Back to Visual Studio. So the implementation of how to read the cookies is our first part. So let's do that now. So Let's say we want the data to be request state dot data and every cookie data will be available in request dot state 
and ultimately you need to access the variable which you defined over here. So for us it's the data variable or the data property and we assign it to a data variable and from here we can just check if data isn't available. Let's return a view and the message no cookie data available. Oh, sorry, I missed that. We are in the create handler. Let me update it here. We are in the reading state. So let's put that here. And if there's data available, we want it to be cookie data and the cookie should equal data. All right. So in the background, our happy server restarts because we started it with supervisor. It listens for changes on HPS and JS files. So we can update it or we don't have to update it throughout our development process. Let's go back to Chrome and check if we read anything. Okay, no cooking data available. Well, that's what we expect. Next one is how to create the data. Creating cookie data depends on an object in JavaScript. So let's create the cookie data object. Let's do it like this. And let's say my last with it is this one. With this data available, you need to set it like this. Add the state to the response and set the state for our data and explicitly to this object. So creating a cookie in Happy is adding the state function to the response and ultimately providing the actual cookie data for the named cookie. All right, let's switch back to Chrome and check if we can create the cookie. Oh, sorry created and there you go the cookie data is available so reading the cookies worked and creating a cookie work we'll read it again no cookie data available ah it's maybe because we didn't um we waited for longer than 10 seconds so let's create it again let's read it it's 38 so let's update it it shouldn't be shouldn't update anything again it's 38 so we can still read it let's read it again all right so you can immediately see that the cookie is destroyed after 10 seconds. So usually you want it to maybe be there forever or at least a week or two weeks or let's jump back to Visual Studio Code and from here. So you could also set the TTL to null, which means the cookie lifetime is set to the tab session or the browser session. So once you close the browser, the cookie should be deleted. But newer browsers like Chrome and Firefox usually kind of keep the cookies alive. So you will you need to check it how the cookie handling works in your browser because it isn't only dependent on the happy server. So for us, the 10 second worked. You saw it a second ago or 10 seconds ago. And from here, you can adjust the values. All right, let's get back and implement the cookie update. So. Updating the cookie is kind of the same as creating the cookie. So we want another data object to be the name is updated markers and the last visit is again a new date. And updating the cookie is setting the state again, like data and data. So which means Happy itself uses a state variable and every time you call it, it will update the data property for the request state to this data object. And let's check if it worked. Let's go over to Chrome. Let's update it. Let's read it. It's nine. Let's update it again. Let's read it. It's 15. So you could create or update the cookie and it will be updated over here. Now the last option is to go back and implement the handler for deleting the cookie. So 
Deleting the cookie means you need to unstate a specific cookie. In our case, it's the data cookie. So using this option will delete the cookie. That's everything you need to implement. So let's switch back to Chrome and just read the cookie. There's nothing available. So let's create it and delete it and read it again. No cookie data available. We could increase the 10 second span, but let's create it, read it, delete it, read it. It didn't took me 10 seconds to click through the options. So reading a cookie, deleting a cookie and creating a cookie worked. And I think it's a kind of nice way to handle cookies in Happy because it's usually just adding a method to the response. So it's really nice and happy to set cookies and yeah, it's a nice, nice little handling. All right, there's one last thing I wanted to tell you. So let's switch over to Chrome and go to the happy.js documentation. Let me increase the size and search server.state. All right, here you can see the options and there's this specific option, the is HTTP only, which is default set to true. And that means that Chrome sometimes doesn't expose the cookie data to JavaScript. So the happy server has trouble to access the cookie data in case you can't read your cookie data. Set this variable to false. So let's copy that. I want to show you it's the setup is like this. And setting is HTTP only to false should give you access to the cookie handling in Chrome and to the actual cookie values. So be careful setting this option. The default values of Happy are nicely thought out. So you don't have to override everything. Adjust the options to your needs. And yeah, let's shortly review how to create, read, update and delete cookies. Creating cookies, you need a JavaScript object and set the state for a specific cookie name and the data passed as a second argument. Reading a cookie is just accessing the request state with your specific property. In our case, it's named data. And updating a cookie is setting the state again, as you did with creating a cookie. And deleting is the unstate method and providing the name for the cookie you want to delete. Well, that's it. We hope you learned a lot throughout this video. Give it a like if you do, share this with your friends and tell me in the comments below if you want more videos on Happy and what specific videos. Enjoy day, enjoy coding and make it rock.